Good day, everyone. This is Pilot Needles, and welcome to DDO Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in DDO and on the tabletop. Please welcome my co-host from Ravenloft, Dracula. Hey now, everybody. How's it going out there? Hello, Drek. Everything is going fine out here. So let's see what kind of news we have, though. Doesn't look like much is going on this week. Everyone was either on vacation or working on Lotro, apparently. Yeah, there's just not a lot going on DDO-wise other than the work that, you know, we're waiting on to see on Bullroar at some point. Uh, not bull roar. Uh, <laughs> totally see get the that? game. See, see, see that's your fault. You motion. did that to me. You <laughs> did that to me. That is your fault. I'm blaming that on you. <laughs> Lamania. That's what I wanted to say. We're waiting to see that work yet. So yeah, we have the chronicle, and that's really about all we have game news wise. Then let's then head into the chronicle where it looks like a bird themed hall. I want to say that's not Castle Ravenloft. I want to say that is from, and the name of the quest is escaping me right now. It'll probably come to me. <laughs> It'll come to you when we're finished with the show. Yeah, exactly. Probably. Yeah. But anyway, it's Ravenloft ish. Still, still, still getting the Ravenloft cover shots on the Chronicle. In our Chronicle this week, the community spotlight has Maze Arcana and Wizards of the Coast has announced a new upcoming Eberron-based tabletop live stream show. And the name of that show recently just changed. It was called something else, but now it is called Maze Arcana, the Inkwell Society. Okay. And that is going to start Wednesday, March 21st at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And you can be that either on the official DDO stream channel. They are going to be hosting the Maze Arcana stream. So you can watch that either place. But always good to see a brand new Eberron based show. Because if you're familiar with Maze Arcana and the work they do, they do love them some ever on as we all do mm-hmm. also in our community spotlights bruce shepherd is frequently uploading ddo videos over on his youtube channel you can check out his latest one which is slave pits of the under city so click over and watch his videos and give him a subscribe he does some pretty cool videos and then of course we have our fan site news section of the chronicle ddo cast is leveling up Ding! Congratulations. Ding? There, there, you have never heard that? Ding? First. Yeah, I've heard of Ding. I'm just wondering what what did they level up with? Uh, they are levels 23 and 24. Ah. They're old now. They're level 24 now. Okay. <laughs> and that, of course, is part of their series. They're going through and talking about leveling. So this time it was 23 through 24. So check out the latest episode of DDO Cast. Sip over on his Massively blog is Splunking in the Caves of Cormier. So check that out. And a very bad guild gets shamed by the Dreaming Dark. Click over and check out their latest videos. And if you have not checked out Brock and Friends on Friday nights, they are on the DDO stream. Check out their most recent show. That is a wonderful, amazing stream. They play DDO, but they do it roleplay style. So they take a quest and they do the quest, but they actually are acting like they're playing Dungeons and Dragons pen and paper and they're doing role play and they're coming up with their own stories it is amazing so if you haven't checked that out check them out once again that is brock and friends and finally in our fan site news section mickey is running ravenloft raids imagine that mickey raiding i am shocked as we all are (laughs) and of course we have the chronicle comment of the week and that is what is the name of the best store in Barovia. The best store in Barovia. Gums Gang is saying Drax Coffee and Waffles. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah, let's see. <laughs> That's great. That's uh, awesome. I was, I, I would think that we need something for some education. So, s- I know this may sound inappropriate, but sometimes a reversal is nice. And that would be Sunrise Books. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
finally I will. <laughs> uh, my answer which actually I saw over in the forum thread post on this because I posted this too and then I know somebody else posted it uh, Blood Bath and Beyond <laughs> See, Bonnie Flex it. Oh. Bonnie Bue saying Valix co- uh, Coffin Emporium. <laughs> I like that too. Oh. So many good answers. So many good answers. And then, of course, we have our official screen shot of the week, and that is Daydream is visiting the 12 as snow falls in the 354th DDO screenshot of the week. And that is a pretty cool uh, little screenshot there, looking kind of up, going up. Uh, towards the Tower of the Twelve. I like that screenshot. Right. Very nice. Then uh, let us head to our store sales. And is there anything useful up for sale this week? There is, actually. There is some good stuff. 30% off character banks, which is always good to see on sale. Shared bank space, crafting storage, and platinum vault upgrades. So store, store, and more storage. 30% off. Uh, Also, inventory space, which everybody can always use more of that, and select bags on sale as well at 30% off in our DDO store. And then we have our free sample of the week, which is through February 22nd. That is going to get you a lesser treasure, Hunter's Elixir. You will get one of those elixirs when you use the coupon code TREASHUNT, T-R-E-S-H-U-N-T, Trez Hunt. T-R-E-S-H-U-N-T. Once again, one lesser treasure hunter's elixir with that coupon code through February the 22nd. All right, then let's see what we have coming in from the dungeon this week. And I think I there's this new role-playing game that's coming out in Kickstarter that I just think is completely inconceivable. I don't think you know what that word means. Oh, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you haven't guessed it, uh, we're talking about The Princess Bride. The official role-playing game is up on Kickstarter, and I cannot believe it took this long for somebody to come up with the idea to make a Princess Bride role-playing game. You would think somebody would have done this already. Are you sure it hasn't been done already? And I looked and I couldn't find one. Well, you could have fu- Okay. I found some like fan made versions and stuff, but nothing that was like an official commercial project or and anything of the sort. But yes, this is done by Toy Vault and they are uh, kickstarting this, of course. And this is going to be a cooperative storytelling game where each player is going to take on a role. Uh, of a character within, of course, the Princess Bride universe. And the character can be anything you would imagine you want them to be. And it is based off of the fudge system. So if you're familiar with that, you kind of know how the RPG is going to play. And as I said, they are uh, up on Kickstarter right now. As of this recording on a Monday evening, they have 23 days to go. And they are at 82% of their goal. Uh, they are at uh, 37202 of the $45,000 goal. Oh, oh, you mean they didn't make it to their goal yet? No, I'm, I'm actually surprised. Inconceivable! <laughs> nice. Well played, by the way. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that this one didn't... Uh, I, I figured this was going to be one like most of the other things, and they would just uh, hit their goal almost immediately and start doing stretch goals. But nope, they're still working on it, but they have 23 days to go. So if you're into The Princess Bride, check out The Princess Bride role-playing game over on Kickstarter. Then let us head over into Gen Con, where I've heard that they're really selling their... their ooh, what is it called? Boy, can you remember what the word is? The badges. Badges, yes, badges. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're going quick like they did last year. And uh, not that uh, anybody's counting or anything, but there's 23 weeks, two days, two hours, and 18 minutes to go. 
until Gen Con 2018. Just, you know, throwing that out there off the top of my head. Oh. <laughs> and how many days till it sells out? That, they didn't exactly say what it's going to sell out, but they did put out a press release that are saying they are on pace for another sellout. The actual badge sales versus badge badge sales last year they have sold more badges this year than they did last year and of course last year we all know sold out for the first time ever so they are expecting to put a cap on badges yet again so if you want your badges for gen con you best be getting them soon they're expecting sometimes uh early in the summer so i would assume end of may early june that's probably when they're gonna sell out and the other big thing that it was kind of weird i would think they would have made more of a bigger deal than this than they did they, it, this was kind of like tacked on at the end of the press release they extended their deal with the city of indianapolis so gen con uh, is now going to be in indianapolis through 2022 and I, you know, uh, they were good until 2020 is when they had previously had it. And they said they were shopping around. Well, apparently they couldn't find anywhere else to go. So they did a two-year extension with the city of Indianapolis. And I'm kind of thinking they're going to stay in Indianapolis, even though Indy's getting a little small for them. I don't think yeah. any other any other city could handle Gen Con. I really don't. Well, yeah, that's it'd be tough to find a city that could accommodate something that large. <laughs> so yes, and then they did announce uh, along with that uh, announcement that they uh, re-signed with the city of Indianapolis through 2022. That this year they are also going to be using Lucas Oil Stadium yet again. So Gen Con is going to be the convention center, Lucas Oil Stadium. And surrounding hotels yet again. Bonnie View saying maybe Indy made them an offer they couldn't refuse. I think Indy will do anything to keep them as much money as they make for Indy. I'm pretty sure Indy is going to bend over backwards and, and make it happen that, that, that they stay there. So let's go and see what's on the tabletop. IDW Games has announced that the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are going to be munchkinized. Oh, munchkin, I'm telling you. If you have a property, eventually it's going to end up a munchkin game. <laughs> just, just say it. Well, seeing how last year they did Munchkin Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you can think of it, I'm pretty sure they can make a munchkin out of it. But yeah, they're teaming up with Steve Jackson Games, of course, uh, to bring everybody's favorite Mutant Ninja Turtles to the munchkin universe. And of course, players will take on the roles of the turtles and their friends to fight monsters and grab the treasures. The card game is going to be available in a standard deluxe and deluxe ultimate edition. And this deluxe is to, ultimate yeah it's not just deluxe it's deluxe ultimate and this is going to be over on kickstarter of course because that's what you do you make a munchkin game and you put it on kickstarter because those are the rules barely apparently those are the rules but it is cool to see the turtles in munchkin though i i i, I think it, it will be fun i mean you know i like munchkins i love the turtles so what's not to love then also, let's have a look at what's coming in from Avalon Hill, and it looks like that we are going to take the classic Axis and Allies and zombify it. <laughs> yes, we are. And we kind of knew this was coming. You might remember, oh, a few weeks ago now, we talked about how the Wizards of the Coast president, uh, Chris Cox, was uh, doing an interview with Rolling Stone's Gixel blog, and he kind of, you know, mentioned how they were looking at the existing properties of Avalon Hill, and he kind of, you know, just threw kind of tongue-in-cheekly that, hey, you know, what would you think about Axes and Allies and Zombies? Well, this past uh, weekend was uh, the New York 
Toy Fair, and uh, Wizards of the Coast usually does a uh, investor update there on the Friday of the Toy Fair, and this year was no different. Hasbro uh, was there, and when it was time for Wizards of the Coast segment to that, Chris Cox was talking about, you know, just basically the boring sales numbers, and then he was kind of talking about some stuff that was coming out from Wizards and Avalon. And he said, and I will quote him here, we are also going to invigorate board games with our Avalon Hill brand. Axes and Allies and Zombies will take the beloved World War II strategy classic, Axes and Allies, and add a fun alternate history with, with streamlined gameplay, curveballs such as chainsaw tanks, and zombie mind control rays, and of course a zany storyline uh, strategy fans everywhere will be sure to enjoy. So this is supposed to come out later in the year. No word on the price or anything else about it other than that. But yes, it is official. Access and Allies and Zombies coming soon. Right. We seem to be getting sequels to just about every game you could think of. I mean, at this rate, someone's going to come up with a sequel to Uno even. You know what? They are, Pine Leaf. What? They are, yes. Your wish has been granted. You have probably been waiting for this. For, waiting oh, for 47 this. years since Uno hit the market, Mattel oh. decided, okay, it's been 47 years. Now is the time we make an Uno sequel. Okay. And is what's it going to be called? Is it going to be called something, something really cool? What? Logically, what would you call it? Uno dos tres. Uh, dos. There you go. It's oh. uno dos. Yeah, yeah. I at first I thought this was a joke when I got <laughs> it. Was this like, April first? Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you guys are a little early for April first. And then I read it, and I'm like, oh my god, they're serious. Now, see, now Bonnie's got it right. But Bonnie being on the chat is saying uno and zombies. Uno and zombies. That's what we need. A zombified Uno. A zombified Uno. That's what we need. That would be freaking amazing, actually. But yes, Uno Dos, of course, is the sequel to Uno, which, you know, makes sense. And the object of the game is going to be the same, but instead of running two piles of cards, you will have two piles to choose from. So you have two stacks of cards on the table instead of one. And then, of course, when you get down to two cards, you have to yell DOS instead of UNO. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, not a lot went into the design of this. (laughs) Apparently not. Just just saying. Uh, This is going to be available starting on March the 4th. And it's going to be officially only sold at Target stores for $5.99. And then later on in the summer, it will be uh, available everywhere. Uh, about mid-August, you'll be able to pick it up anywhere. But the MSRP is five ninety nine on it, so it's got a decent price point. Easy to get into. It's just, yeah. Did we really need a sequel to Uno? Okay. I heard that on top on their list for next year is Tres. You know, <laughs> they actually, I saw an interview with one of the marketing people from 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 Mattel and they said no we have no plans to make that okay <laughs> the interviewer actually ask him about that okay. well it was an obvious question i i think they're they his answer was like no i think we're going to be happy with dose for a while or something like that <laughs> all right another 48 years before the <laughs> For the next sequel. Let us go and see what's on the screen. And we'll begin with Warriors of Waterdeep Dungeons and Dragons mobile game coming this spring. A mobile game. Yeah, but not just a mobile game, a free-to-play mobile game. Oh, a free-to-play mobile game. Those, those Aren't those things expensive? Yeah, doesn't that just strike fear <laughs> to your heart when you hear free-to-play and mobile game together? But yeah, 
And once again, we kind of knew this was coming. This has been hinted about for a while, but it is now official. Uh, Wizards of the Coast is teaming up with a company called Ludia, who is no stranger to making mobile games. They have uh, other titles such as Jurassic Park Builder and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Legends. Both of those are uh, pretty well-received mobile titles from them. And this uh, Worries of Waterdeep is uh, designed, as I said, is a free-to-play turn-based RPG that is going to let characters choose from 12 different classes and 9 races. And uh, as of the press release that I got, there is a human wizard, an elf cleric, a halfling fighter, a dwarf rogue, a dragonborn ranger, a tiefling warlock, and a half-orc barbarian that you used to choose. You can choose from. Gameplay is going to be turn-based with combat featuring a mix of combat, uh, melee, and spells. Players can use cards to upgrade their characters. Remember that. I'll get back to that in a second. Which they can obtain by either purchasing in card packs are from completing the storyline chapters and beating certain bosses who will drop the cards that they need. Uh Aha, but of course it's going to be impossible to kill those bosses without purchases. Right, exactly. You're going to have to end up buying card packs. But I did do a little bit of research, and the other two mobile games that they have, people are saying they're not too free-to-play-ish, so there might be hope for this one. Oh, okay. Um, Because people are saying the other games you actually can play without actually spending money on. It's harder... Because you have to, you know, grind out the game to try to get the card drops you need. But I guess we'll see. But uh, you can uh, go over to the official website, which uh, you can get a link in the show notes. And then uh, sign up for the beta of this, which is going to be coming sometimes this spring. And Bonnie is in the chat is saying, wait, there's no gnomes? I thought that too. It's like, I can't believe they don't have a gnome. Maybe that'll be like a oh, deal that you can get. Yeah, yeah. So their first DLC will be Nomageddon. <laughs> there you go. Hey, they're gonna have to pay us for that though, because I think we have Nomageddon trademarked at this point. Well then, that, well, let's see about that then. <laughs> then let's head into another game where we have a DLC that has just come out, and that is in Tales of Candle Keep: Tomb of Annihilation. We finally have their first. Real DLC, because I don't call those four packs they put up before real DLCs. For the first real DLC, Kawasha, the human wizard. Druid, 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 druid. I'm going to say, he is a druid. But it's not just him. You get a little pet that he uses, too. He has a little Vega Pidgey pet that, that comes with him. It's, he's awesome. He's Yeah, he's cool. It's like a mini Groot that runs around with you. <laughs> <laughs> and this DLC, of course, does include uh, Kwanzaa the Druid, a custom D12, and some wallpaper for your computer as well. And this is available right now over on Steam. It's currently on sale for three ninety nine. I don't know when that sale ends. So if you want to get it, get it while the getting's good before it goes up to regular price. Did you say custom D12? Uh, did I say D12? If I said D12, I did not mean to. I meant D12. Oh, uh, I thought that was wishful thinking. Like that. <laughs> Might have been. Maybe I'm still stuck on last week's show. That could be too. Yeah, yes. Where are the D12s? <laughs> then let's head into our weekend gaming. And- Jurak, what have you been up to? Well, I actually did some stuff this week. Not a lot, but I'm um, still running Devil's Gambit, Grim and Barrett, still trying to get that quiver. Still <laughs> don't have that quiver. Yeah, You're exactly. quivering with hope. Yeah, well, at some point, maybe the RNG gods will smile upon me and it'll drop, but I doubt it. <laughs> I highly doubt it. Though I just thought of a good way I might be able to get it. Bonnie? I'm going to send you a message later. Stand by. Ooh, I have an idea. You have a plan? I have a plan, Bonnie. It involves you, but I have a plan. 
Yeah. <laughs> And then my uh, druid that I have is uh, starting to run the Mist of Ravenloft. I realized for some reason I haven't ran the druid through Ravenloft yet. Of course, my my druid is my Wooplock, so I am running through Ravenloft. I did the intro quest Into the Mist. Also did In the Shadow of the Castle, which is, of course, Death House. Fresh break to dreams and an invitation to dinner. Ran those, so I will continue on with the rest of Raven Mop. Then I did some stuff with you. I'll let you talk about that. And that's really all the DDO that I got in this week. Uh, elsewhere in video games, though, did play Seven Days to Die, of course, over on our Hot Mess server. Uh, we had another Horde Night. Survived that okay. And we're actually getting ready for yet another Horde Knight. So Horde Knights are coming fast and furious here these days. And then uh, I also have a single-player game of Seven Days to Die I am playing. I am playing a new mod that is out. It's called the War of the Walkers. And oh my god, is it hard. Holy cow, is it hard. And there are so many zombies. There is like way more zombies in this than like vanilla Seven Days to Die. But it's fun. I like it a lot. And then other video game-wise, I played Subnautica. I finally uh, installed that and got that. I got a uh, key for that for a review. So I just remembered, hey, I never installed that. So I installed it. And there you go. And uh, played it for a little bit. Uh, I like it so far. It's different, but it's fun. It's uh, I'm trying to think of uh, the easiest way to describe it. It's like a survival game set underwater i guess is the best way to describe well, it my dis my description of it was don't starve underwater yeah i i could see that too because yes i actually did manage to starve myself to death so, so yes don't starve underwater that works so look for a review of that coming at some point once i feel like i'm ready to actually write the review and then uh, also for review i played a little bit of pathfinder kingmaker that is a new um, computer RPG that is uh, coming out, of course, based in the Pathfinder universe. And this is the first time they uh, actually have a uh, action, or not an action RPG, just a computer role-playing game based in Pathfinder. It was successfully kickstarted. It's in pre-alpha now. So I'm going to kind of wait for my review. They didn't want the review out right away since they're in pre-alpha. Um, I'll probably wait until they at least get to beta because right now it's a little buggy. But of course that's to be expected because they're in pre-alpha. It's not really even alpha. It's like pre-alpha so there's like a lot of stuff that's not done. But the stuff that is done, it's pretty darn fun. All right. it, it reminds me a lot of like Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. It's kind of that style of gameplay. So if you're mm -hmm familiar with, with that style of gameplay that's pretty much what it is but it but it uses the pathfinder rules that so it has no relationships into the old avalon hill board game none whatsoever okay <laughs> other than the kingmaker name okay just checking that's the only relation that it has and then i think think you can go i will have to check uh, i will put a link in the show notes i think you can actually go over on the website and buy like a pre-order for it which will get you into the alpha i think don't quote me on that but i'm pretty sure you can if so i will put that in the show notes so you can get more information about pathfinder kingmaker and then uh, on the tabletop i played uh, so a little bit of hero clicks X-Men Xavier School did this at uh, my friendly local game shop. Uh, one of my friends actually runs the organized play at the uh, FLGS. And he said, why don't you come Saturday and check out this new uh, Xavier School Hero Clicks? We're going to have a tournament on it. So I'm like, cool. That Yeah, I'll do that. Because I haven't played uh, Hero Clicks since like, Hero Clicks like, originally came out like way back in the day. And it's really changed a lot since the last time I played it. But so we got there and then it ended up that they didn't get any of the organized play stuff in the packs that they needed. So it got canceled, but we decided to play anyway. So we just sat down and uh, played a couple uh, games of Heroclix 
X-Men Xavier School. I won one and I lost one. So I was even on the day. So it worked for me. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. And then uh, that's really all I did. I had another busy week. But how about you, Pine Leaf? What were you up to? We will begin with what I did with you. We decided that we would take our namesakes for our characters. So therefore, I went on Pine Leaf and Drek went on Drek and Letta. And we were both pretty close together on the level. And I was, so I went into Lord's March, Lord's March Plaza, where we did Diplomatic Immunity, Framework, and Eyes of Stone. Then on my favorite soul, I was level six there, and I went into House Jurasco, ran Mirror Sleepless Nights, then the Mystery of Delara's Tomb. After that, I decided that I needed to get a little bit, wanted to get to level seven before continuing on with Delara's Tomb, so I went to the House K, where I ran Ruined Halls, the Lara Summoning, the Forgotten Caverns, and the Chamber of Insanity. After which, I just had a little sliver left in order to get to level 7. So I decided to repeat Mirror Sleepless Nights. Got to level 7. Then I ran The Missing Party and Free Delara. Then in Minecraft, I continued along in the temple where I built a cistern for the temple. Then in Tabletop, I did my February playthrough for Pandemic Legacy Season 2, and I don't think it is possible to get a friendlier set of cards drawn in a game of Pandemic that I did for this round. It was like, what? Because I would get the exact cards that you need whenever I was drawing. Okay, it wasn't perfect as hell, but I would say that it was as good a set of draws as anyone has any reasonable right to expect a pandemic. Maybe a li- even more than a little bit more reasonably right to expect. So, it got finished very quickly, and probably just as well because, of course, the infection deck was getting ready to turn nasty, which was definitely not doing a friendly turn. So, therefore, I had a very, very friendly player draws and very unfriendly draws on the infection deck. So I guess they bounced each other off because it was a race to see whether I would win first or whether the infection deck will start to blow up my entire board. And I managed to win the race on that one. So therefore, I completed February, and I have a feeling the game's going to have its vengeance in March because... You can't have two games go that sweetly in a row. Then in tabletop video games, I played Tales from Candlekeep, Tomb of Annihilation, where I played several rounds where I was jumping back and forth between playing with Dragon Bait and with Kawasha the Druid. So yes, I did get the Druid and was playing around with him so that I could see how he goes. And so far, I'm not exactly impressed with Wild Shape abilities. But, yeah, the pet that you get and the other things that Kawasha does, though, seems to be a reasonably good character to have around, though I still have a liking for Dragon Bait. We currently have 18 supporters on Patreon, and and if you'd like to help support DDO players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast your choice, or be a guest with us for an episode of DDO Players News. This week, we did not receive any emails, but if you'd like to send us one, you can send it to podcast at ddoplayers.com. You can also follow us at Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Ally, DDO Players at DDO Players, Draculetta at Dracula underscore 72, and Pine Leaf at Pine Leaf Deals. The Players Alliance has three live shows every Monday day, 30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We have DDO Players News. Every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Load Your Players News. And every other Thursday at 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have XP Quest. And you could catch our new show on the first Tuesday of every month at 9.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, Chromatic Bits, which is a new pre-recorded video game music podcast, and this will air on Mixler, and that we will be re- releasing a podcast version soon afterwards. And you can join us for our live shows at ddoplayers.com slash live. And that is all for tonight, and this is Pilot Newells reminding you to quest responsibly.